I see a, a lot of patients that, 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 are, that are frustrated because when you're talking about a biologic, you're talking about something that's, that's a big investment for, for society. And um, I've had a, a, a patient who actually was a, a, a personal friend and colleague who had declined biologics because of how expensive they were. And not because of how expensive they were to him, but because of how expensive they were uh, to, to society. And, and, and this gentleman had life-threatening asthma. Uh, I mean, would, would have episodes that frightened me and uh, bad chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps. He didn't, he didn't, have, um, he didn't have eczema, but um, I, mean, I just knew that a biologic was going to be life-altering for him. And um, I, I don't give out my cell phone number to, to patients, but um, this person had my cell phone number, called me at home on, on the weekend after being on uh, Dupilumab for, oh, I don't know, a couple of months, but he says, Alan, this had changed my life. I can't believe I didn't listen to you sooner uh, about that. And you don't have to have many conversations with, with patients that, that start that way, whether they're in the office or, or somebody that called you to, to make you a, a, a real uh, believer. Um, you know, prescribing biologics for, for those of us who are who are um, allergists and, and asthma doctors is an expensive proposition. I've got uh, an RN that I hire that, that, that shepherds over all of my patients in getting these drugs uh, approved. Um, uh, you know, one of the conversations I have in the shared decision makings with, with patients is that it, if you want this biologic and you're gonna get it, I'm glad to get it approved for you. But what, 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 where we're gonna have a parting of the ways is if I have my staff spend four or five hours getting this drug approved, and then you change your mind. Um, we're not doing that, all right? I don't want you to make a decision until you have made up your mind that this is the right drug for you and if we get it, get it approved, because literally, we spend hours doing that. It's, it's completely uh, un unreimbursed, but you know, I, I, I love people. I went into medicine because I wanted to, to see people with asthma to stop suffering needlessly. And um, now that we, we, we have the, the, the biologics, I, I have a, an RN who is, very good at getting these approved. She knows the angles when she runs into a problem. Uh, she, she talks to me about it. And um, in, in fact, after I've done shared decision making, I can think of one patient who qualified for all of them. And he, he you know, what he said was whatever I can get the quickest. Um, you know, I'm tired of feeling this way. And so I went to the uh, RN. I says, okay, here's the profile. You know, where can, where can we get the uh, approval the, uh, the, the quickest and the easiest? And um, uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's different with, uh, with, with, with different patients. You know, certainly adherence is an issue with, with, with any medicine. And a lot of times, you know, you find your patients with severe asthma, you would you think would be most it, it adherent would be, um, or, or least it, 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 it adherent. And fortunately, we are beginning to have some medicines that sync with your phone so that maybe we're going to have a, a better idea about that with the auto refill programs at pharmacies. You know, somebody could have a, a load of their prevention medicine in the house and you might not, uh, might not, um, no, but these drugs for these patients are so life-altering, the adherence is great. I'll, I'll tell you the reason that there is non-adherence, it's almost solely um, economic. When the, when the copay cards run out, I had one patient that really had uh, a life-altering response with chronic uh, sinusitis with polyposis and asthma with um, dupilumab, and um, they made a mistake with their insurance. They gave us two insurance cards, and one of them wasn't active, and you know, the assumptions were made that they had these two active cards and they ended up with a big bill. Now, it wasn't my fault and I'm really, really, really sorry about it, but you know, he, he elected to, to, to go off the medicine. Um, you know, I've, I've had some patients with, with high deductible plans where the copay cards run out and, and, and they go off. You know, certainly uh, now that we've got more than one biologic for, for asthma, the pharmaceutical companies are more happy to uh, supply us with samples. And, and so sometimes in those patients, we can, you know, supplement them with that if it's only a month or two that they're going to be out of at, at, the, at the year. But, but by and large with the, with the biologics, I find my patients, you know, want to be adherent. I had a, um, oh, 
I had a conversation with a young lady who um, was on uh, Dupixa, Dupilumab, and um, I cut her off. Um, we, we, I said, we're not going to do your pre-certification for it uh, until you come into this office and we can see you. She, she hadn't, uh, she the no shows for multiple, multiple virtual visits. No show for a virtual visit, which is, is which is uh, in my practice very rare. Um, uh, one patient population, the Medicaid population, our our show up rate in person is about thirty uh, percent, and on the virtual visits, over ninety percent. But this one was a, a multi no show for for virtual visits, and but yet when I got her in, she, she wasn't taking any of her medicines right except for her biologic, and she was taking it uh, com com completely right. So, um, and 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 that's how I got her in because I wasn't going to recertify her for her for her biologic until she came in for the visit. And really, um, uh, you know, she had uh, actually had eczema, not asthma. Asthma, but how could I? I says, listen, I've got to look at your skin. And you know, we were set up with virtual visits on videos, and and, and she didn't come. And so we finally says, you know, you got to come. And, uh, you know, when we took the, the history and looked at things and looked at the refill persistent, the only thing that she was doing was her biologic. And so we've had a, had a coaching session with her. In fact, immediately before uh, I jumped on this, this, this video, I, I got the, um, the, the, the fa on the fax machine a message that it had been reapproved. So um, that's, that's, a, um, uh, that's been my experience with, with adherence to biologics. It's, it's usually good. And when it's not good, it's economic.